Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our webinar on Next Generation Workplace, or Workplace of the Future, as some of you may know it, and how you get there. Uh, we have Vishal Brown, York Tells Vice President of Professional Services, and Carrie Whalen, Polycom's Solution Marketing Manager, and I'm Samantha Osowski, York Tells Vice President of Marketing. A couple of quick housekeeping items. Uh, since everyone will be muted, you can submit questions in the window on your screen, and we'll answer all of them at the end. And also, you'll receive a link to the recording of this session within just a few days. Okay, so let's get started. For those of you getting familiar with Yorktel, we are a video managed services and UC company that's been in business for 30 years with offices throughout the US and Europe. Uh, we provide large enterprises and the federal government with video communication support from system assessment uh, through design, through implementation, and system uh, management. So when an enterprise's IT department uh, realizes that the video interoperability and mobility complexities are beyond their skill set, they come to us. And we also hold ISO 27001 certification, as well as the highest levels of certifications with the industry leading manufacturers. Uh, you can see we're a global company there. There's a, a map there with uh, our locations and our uh, three global data centers are circled. So, oh, by the way, we are also uh, the recipient recently of Commercial Integrators 2015 Integrator of the Year. But now on to the real subject matter that you want to hear. Vishal? Excellent. Um, can you guys hear me okay? just want to make sure audio is coming across well. Yes. Excellent. Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone on the, on the East Coast, and good morning on the West Coast. Um, <clears throat> just to reintroduce myself, uh, Vishal Brown. Uh, I lead the professional services practice at Yorktel. <clears throat> I've been here four years, and I've been about 20 years within the unified communication space. So this topic um, that Sam mentioned at, mentioned at the top of the call, um, next generation workplace or workplace of the future, um, it's a it's an, a vertical uh, or a business strategy that a lot of companies are getting into. So the, the reason we want to address this call here today is, <clears throat> or just this topic, is to kind of uh, provide some insight in what this uh, term means, uh, this phrase means, next generation workplace, uh, provide some considerations for uh, the wider community at whole <clears throat> when you start looking at next generation workplace initiatives, uh, some recommendations, and lastly, uh, some use case examples and technology examples you should consider when deploying uh, next generation workplace uh, strategy. <clears throat> so going to this topic here. Um, it's relevant for us to understand some statistics on the, the change in workforce demographics, right? So um, the future of the workplace is largely expected to transform into a smart and connected network that will facilitate remote work style. So what does that mean? What is actually changing? So by 2020, half of the U.S. workforce will be millennials, and this is according to the Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics. <clears throat> so that's in, what, five years, right, four years? Um, by 2030, 75% will be will make up the uh, the workforce. Um, over 60% of employees, according to Gallup, will feel not engaged with their work, right? And as you look at that millennial generation, how do you increase engagement? How does HR increase engagement? Um, how do managers increase engagement? So it's something that we all need to consider as you consider <coughs> this new generation of workforce. And when you look at the real estate side, uh, for a, from from an efficiency perspective, overall office space will decline by 70 percent by 2020, or nearly 90 percent of organization will adopt more of a mobile work style. Right, and this is according to Citrix. So that just some stats to put it in, into perspective about uh, what we're seeing in the workforce, what the makeup of the workforce is going to look like in a few years, and how office space plays plays a role there. So let's now define next generation workplace. <clears throat> so according to the digital workforce framework, next generation workplace lives at the intersection of people, organization, and tools. According to Gartner, it's it's an ongoing deliberate approach to deliver a more consumer-like computing environment that is better able to facilitate innovative and flexible working. 
<clears throat> so those are DWF and Gartner's definition. So what does Yorktel consider the foundational elements of the next generation workplace? Right. So these are the, the four items I want us to consider here today on the call, which is enabling a flexible, flexible corporate culture. Right. How do you create a sense of community and transparency in the work environment? How do you start creating a horizontal organizational structure? How do you create flexible work schedules? How do you rethink KPIs when it comes to employee evaluation? So those are elements you have to consider in a flexible, flexible corporate culture. The next element is the technology ecosystem. <coughs> Pardon my cough. Um, so this is really dealing with all the technology that you would put in, provide to an end user, be it in a physical workspace or wherever they choose to work to enable a technology ecosystem. So that includes their personal world, their digital world, and their physical world. And today's talk is going to focus a lot on this technology ecosystem. Um, if you were to spend time across these four pillars here, it, we can take, we can go on for hours, but I'm going to focus on the technology ecosystem. But I wanted to outline for you the main elements of the next generation workplace. So the third one is creating an activity-based workspaces and physical spaces. Right, so that's really goes back to the the real estate um, stat I provided before, uh, how how <clears throat> real estate workspaces um, are are being optimized. Right, when you consider locations like New York City and and California and L.A. and Silicon Valley, the cost of real estate is extremely expensive. If you have a lot of re remote work workforce, if you have a remote workforce or um, you know, uh, a very uh, uh, a workforce that is in the office only a couple days a week, days a week, or they, they telecommute. How do you design office spaces to meet that need, right? So, creating activity-based workspaces. And the last pillar is developing an agile workforce, and that's really focusing on the HR function, the HR element. You know, what is the profile of a next-generation workplace worker? What do they look like? Um, how do you attract and retain that talent? How do you for, for people that you already have or that you're onboarding, how do you train them and create adoption for, for the type of next generation <coughs> services that you want to have, right? How do you create that work style? So those are the main elements of the next generation workplace where you have a flexible corporate culture, a technology ecosystem, activity-based workspaces, and agile workforce. <clears throat> the impact of that is a greater outcome, customer centricity, more employee-led innovation, accelerated process outcomes, and higher employee retention, as well as, as well as greater appeal to prospective employees. Right, goes back to that HR function. <coughs> so, interestingly, when Gartner, uh, for the last couple of years, you know, 2013, 2014, there's been a lot of in interest from customers on next generation workplace. It's doubled for them in the second half of 2014 compared to 2013. So what are we seeing here when we when we analyze this? It's, you know, why would you want to take on this initiative and, and going into some more details here? It's a changing nature of work. It's a shift away from task oriented type work and working towards more of an autonomous and flexible work patterns, right? Um, once you have your laptop, you have your mobile device, you have an internet connection, do you necessarily have to be in the office? Right, you can be anywhere and be fully functional. Right, so is that changing nature of work? The demographic shift. We have folks that are digital natives. They are born, born. They're they grew up with an iPad in their hands, right? And uh, they're they're that's uh, my 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 daughter. She uses it, um, and she's only 18 months, right? So she it seems very natural for them. Whereas f folks that are in the workforce today. They're making that tran transition from analog to digital, right? So you have digital natives. Um, there are new requirements and approaches to work efficiency, right? Um, the consumerization of IT, we've, we've heard that buzzword, but what does it mean for next generation office? Consumers, as we know, are quick at adopting new technology. When you look at how often mobile devices come out, how often new apps come out, they adapt, they adopt those very quickly. And how do you now take that uh, that um, 
the way that consumers adopt technology, how does that impact the workforce? So that consumerization element is one that's part of this discussion. <clears throat> and lastly, citizen IT, right? How do we get employees to really take charge of managing their technical resources, the tools they use, and let them drive how they want to work? So that takes into account BYOD strategies, right? They can bring their own device. Um, they dictate their own schedules, right? They dictate um, how they want to work. So, so those elements really start focusing on citizen IT, what technologies they use. So those are some of the elements we consider. Um, and lastly, the HR-led engagement programs, right? So how does HR really get involved here to promote employee engagement, define a workplace culture, and allow that autonomous decision making? So that's a little bit of the analysis. Now I'll go specifically into <coughs> the technology ecosystem, right? And that's really focusing on the personalization f for that user, uh, the digital world and the physical world. So here's the technology ecosystem. IT have long understood the impact of going digital, right? People, users will bring their own devices, their own apps, their own tools and how they want to perform that job. <coughs> when you consider what's in the personal world, they have their choice of own devices, they bring their own apps, they create their own communities like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, they have their own personal agents on their phone or assistants. You have Siri, you have Google Now, right? When you consider the physical world, um, physical location is an office space, meetings, a travel from a hotel, um, how big are the screen sizes, they range from your, your glanceables, which is which are your, your, like your watch that has media on it or content that serves up to you and uh, could be used for collaboration. Um, it could range to your large screens or immersive technologies, right, those are all in your physical world. And then lastly, in your digital world, what's your cloud, you know, your cloud services. Um, you can have unified communication as a service. You have uh, storage technologies like, you know, Dropbox and Box technology. You have social cloud technologies. You have a rich contextual experience when you use these services. So it creates a smart work environment. So those three components, the digital world, the physical world, and personalization, all make up that technology ecosystem. So <clears throat> I'm going to dive a little bit more into each one of these aspects. So when you look at the, the personalization, consumerization means that the newest and most interesting technologies are coming to consumers first, right? So as an IT director or a CIO, CIO or CTO, how do you manage consumerization? They're coming to end users first and they're, they want to see that same thing at work. And again, when you look at in 2020, you know, 50% would be millennials and 75% by 2030, you have, this is a key consideration. <clears throat> when you look at consumer hardware, again, they range from glanceables to a large screen or immersive room. They're driving the personalization of work. Uh, user expect to carry this customized, personalized way of working to other areas of their lives, including bringing them to the office. So the key takeaway here for CIOs and CTOs and security for that matter at, at companies, the key, the intent is not to flout IT rules, but to work in ways that help their productivity. <clears throat> so we talked about the personal world. Let's not now talk about the digital world. The vo volatility of work environment, the ability of users to work from anywhere, and the growing demand for, for versatilist has led many workers to change job, jobs. So how do you hedge against that? How do you attract and retain talent? We have to understand that the workers coming in, coming in today are looking for activity-based work, right? Work is no longer a destination, but an activity that they expect to be able to do wherever and whenever they want. You don't need to be a, in a physical space or physical location to complete or produce work. You can do these effectively in virtual teams. Polycom on the call today, Yorktel on the call today. <coughs> Excuse me. We're all in remote locations, but we're all working 
as we're as as if we were physically together. Right, so virtual teams are the, really the way uh, collaboration and, and work, actively based work is getting done. And, and lastly, digital literacy is emphasized. It's, it's a requirement coming into uh, the workforce today. To be hired, you have to have digital literacy. So you, you've got to understand, you know, to apply digital liter literacy analysis, collaboration, and the ability to work and manage others using digital tools. So that's the digital world and lastly the physical world, right? We're all using some type of mobile device or screen device I should say. And again going back to the consumer world, we have our large screens at home, we have our iPads, we have our Amazon Fires, we have our Samsung devices. Um, so it's more screens in more places. Client devices are the point at which the physical meets the digital. Screen size is often a determining factor in whether users are carrying a particular device. So I know I'll, I may use my watch for looking at a calendar appointment, right? Um, see what my schedule is look, looking like, what the weather is. Then I may switch to my mobile device to jump into an app because I'm doing a collaboration session that requires voice and just content, not necessarily video. <coughs> I, if I need to be on video for a particular session, I may choose to use that same iPhone or I may upgrade to an iPad type device or other um, uh, tablet that makes sense that has more screen real estate. Or if it's a full collaboration session, I may want to upgrade to a full 65-inch uh, monitor that has um, more you know, higher resolution uh, content for content sharing. or for video communication, a higher resolution image, just because I'm looking at someone, uh, it's an executive level meeting, or I need to really communicate on an important subject, or there are multiple people from multiple locations that require a you know a larger screen and a higher quality image. Um, it may also include where I want to do an immersive screen, where I look I'm looking for that full immersive experience, like Polycom has solutions that cater to that market as well. So screen size is often the determining factor in whether a user is carrying a particular device or choosing to move to a different collaboration type of space. The importance and proliferation of screens will continue to grow in the next generation workplace. That's just a natural order in the way things will grow given what we're seeing in the consumer space. <clears throat> so that's the physical world. So now I would like to make some recommendations here. So as you look at experiences across places and spaces, right? Meeting rooms with personal assistants, the enterprise of things, beacons, sensors, smart objects, uh, machine learning, right? Um, the point is to create a flexible corporate culture, a technology ecosystem, activity-based work styles, and, agile wor and, and an agile workforce that really allows next generation workplace to happen. You want to leverage your existing investments in unified communication and collaboration, right? Um, Carrie will talk about some of the Polycom products here that allows that to happen from a UC, UCNC perspective. Then there's new real estate design approaches that again goes into that activity-based work style and, and allowing users to use free addressable space, for example, or shared workspaces, right? How does real estate and architects design workspaces that allows flexible work? And look to pilot next generation workplace initiatives, right? As you as as this topic becomes relevant and you start looking at, at that change in the generations and the way the millennial generation is looking to engage when they come to work. The key takeaway here is <clears throat> the ultimate goal is to make friction free anytime, anywhere collaboration. So Lastly, I want to cover um, a, a, some sample use cases and a day in the life of a, of a next generation worker. What would that look like? So let's consider some co-worker technology here. Um, <coughs> again, pardon my cough. So how do you do collaboration space optimization? And this goes into the real estate. Uh, conversation here, right? So 
when you start looking at free address space, 63% 60, of companies are seeking, da seeking data to help them make a workplace change. And why would they want to do this? They want to improve workforce, productivity, retention, and attraction. Create workforce flexibility, mobility, and health. And from a real estate perspective, it's cost efficiency, increasing worker ratios, and floor plan agility. So how do you do that? Right, so there are technologies out there that measures workplace activity. So, for example, you can put work point beacons uh, in select points across a floor and measure activity across those workspaces. So, for example, if you place these beacons in your conference rooms, at a desk, a particular office, at the water cooler, um, a hallway, you can understand how the peak utilization rate of, of where people are at a particular time of the day, how often they congregate at the cooler, how often they, they use their conference rooms, how many people are in the conference room, what's the peak usage rate during, uh, over a period of eight hours during the day of that conference room, how many people at a time use that conference room, um, should I continue to invest in that size of conference room. So as you start measuring these worker movements, you can now start optimizing the way you design a floor and, and, and by extension, do the way you design a building to accommodate the next generation worker. <clears throat> so the questions to ask here, some of, some of what I just went through, which type of collaboration space is most used? How long and how many sit by location and what's peak? And how can you help reconfigure an existing space or planning a larger move if you want to move to a new space. It promotes an activity-based layout once you start doing these things. So in, in this specific study here, <coughs> and this was a mid-sized organization, so they started tracking level of activity by hour. And you can see how it's graphed across an entire day there um, by the time of day and, and then over the same day. So what they found was, um, the findings, 22% of free space after study. That means 22% of that floor space was not being used. It cost them $32,000 per year if a single desk or space is not used, right? <clears throat> so just think about the savings there um, if you were to optimize that space. So in essence, what they this company went ahead and did, they added a department to use that 22% of free space to maximize its usage. And with a savings of $260,000 per year, saved when occupied. And that's at a floor level. So imagine doing that in a 60-story building in New York City or in LA, the kind of savings we realized here. So that, that's one example of how collaboration space is being optimized. <clears throat> now, another item here is work style persona. So this is really looking at what are the different use cases or personas you have in a, any work environment? So are they doing local collaboration? Are they doing remote collaboration? What type of users do you have? Are they scientists? Are they clinical research? And how, what's the percentage of the user population that are meeting these specific types of use cases? So as you start mapping these out and having dis descriptors behind them, for example, is it a low interaction or higher interaction? Are these mobile or are they, um, are they in the office? So these are the considerations you would have when defining some of the work style personas uh, in an organization. <clears throat> Another item to consider here is, <clears throat> is um, wayfinding technology. So how would, how would you apply this here? <clears throat> The user interacts with a touch enable kiosk. User, you, user chooses activity based work requirements, and user locates conference rooms and are able to show the best path taken to get to that room. So they walk up to, you know, they, they go to an office space, they want to do video today, and with some whiteboarding capability, they search for that specific technology because that's my requirements for today. Three conference rooms come up. I pick one, I reserve it, I book it, then um, a map comes up that routes me to that room, I can grab my mobile device, scan a QR code, 
and it'll lo guide me live in real time using be beaconing technology to that space. So that's an example of wayfinding technology. Now another option here is to look at um, applications that are being rolled out to help the next generation worker, right? So this is now I know uh, app being used by one of our customers. Um, users need quick tips on how to use a system, make a reservation, schedule a call, reserve a collaboration space. So you can use this now I know app to kind of get videos, get quick reference tips, including using the wayfinding app. <coughs> And they can even request IT help, right? So they're in a collaboration space or they uh, need help setting up a conference or troubleshooting something. They can request help from this, from this app, which includes quick dial capability. Another example here is a digital receptionist. Um, so with, for companies that have a ton of floors or a ton of buildings or a campus, how do you leverage receptionists across multiple floors or multiple buildings, right? So you can leverage a digital receptionist here using that same video kiosk type uh, technology equi equipped with video capability, right? So they're, they're able to help and direct staff, provide badge help if necessarily remotely. The other um, item here to look at is the technology lounge, right? So if users you know, they, they're asked for help on their NIC app, right? On their Now I Know app, and now they want help to troubleshoot something. So they go over to this tech lounge because they're having problems with their PC. Uh, they go up to a test kiosk, ask for assistance. They get scheduled. They can check their place in the queue. Um, and when they arrive, they see their name in the queue and, and their approximate wait time in this test tech lounge type scenario here. <clears throat> in this enhanced link space, um, this would provide a full link room experience, right? So this is leveraging link technology here or Skype for Business technology. So what would you get? Including the integration with the Polycom environment. So you would get click to join functionality, you could get dynamic frame, speaker framing capability, and you will get acoustic fencing capability, right? So that way, even though you're in an open space, um, that acoustic fence uh, only allows with some uh, uh, audio canceling technology, it creates the, a fence around you and that way all that background noise, background chatter is not broadcast to the far end. And lastly, the immersive link room system, which is really leveraging PRISM technology where you have a digital canvas that allows <clears throat> highly dynamic content, allows flexibility and collaboration um, and leverages that link room again but in a larger screen display format. So lastly, I'd like to take you through um, a day in the life, right? What is activity-based work uh, when you apply next generation workplace efforts in an environment? So for example, <coughs> again, pardon my cough. Jose arrives at work. Um, he, he wants to meet with Janet. He, he irons Janet and informs, uh, Janet informs Jose where she will be later in the day to meet with her. So. Jose find, uses wayfinding. He finds where the office is. Um, he then checks into that workspace and blocks that space. He uses the wayfinding app to, to get turn by turn directions. Jose chooses to work near his team, so he sets up a workspace tools uh, using that table there to collaborate with his team. And then Jose uh, meets with team members in the tech lounge because he needs some help there for troubleshooting his laptop. Um, and after productive 15-minute conversation, they each return to their workspace, right? So that's one scenario there. Another one is, um, again, and this is leveraging the free address space that we've talked about. Um, Jose attends a, a meeting with Janet. Um, the remote participants are from Jose's team at the Puerto Rico site, for example. They come in over video. Jose then returns to his team table, has ad hoc conversation with his team members in this ad hoc type workspace, as, you, as you'll see in this pic here. Or he needs to have a one-on-one -on -one session with a staff member, so he goes into a closed, closed type and closed phone booth uh, to have that conversation. He starts a link call with that staff member. And lastly, at the end of the day, Jose uses the kiosk to find dining options, directions to hotel uh, from this video kiosk. So you can see how these 
technologies creates that technology ecosystem. And that's just one bucket of the next generation workplace. As I said before, you have to consider the creating activity work, workspaces and physical spaces. You've got to create that agile workforce. Um, those are other elements you have to consider as well. So that is <clears throat> a presentation on next generation workplace. Um, we'll have questions at the end, but now I'm going to turn it over to Kerry with from Polycom. Kerry? Thank you, Vishal. That was it never ceases to amaze me how much technology just evolves and, and and enhances our our lives and our workplaces. It's unbelievable. Um okay. So let me talk to you a little bit about some of what Polycom is doing to um oh sorry one second. I'm trying to just minimize my uh my menu over here. Hmm. Okay. So, um, so thank you so much for being here, everybody. I'm really happy to be here with my partners at Yorktel um, and with you to talk a little bit about how Polycom is addressing the workplace of the future and some solutions that we have and that we've recently announced um, to our portfolio. I am the Solutions Marketing Manager for Group Audio Solutions. I've been with Polycom for 10 years. And I've been in the um, video conferencing industry for almost 20 years. It's hard to believe. So to, to, to expand upon even more from what Vishal was talking about, you know, we are in the most interconnected time in human history. And here's, here's a little bit more data to frame our, um, our discussion a little bit. As of 2015, research has showed there's over 1.3 billion mobile workers. I'm, I am among them. I'm, as you can see, I'm working from my home office here in southern New Hampshire. In 2016, video is expected to be the number one preferred communication tool, if it isn't already. And by 2017, $181 billion will be the size of the bring your own device market. That's incredible. So, you know, what does all this mean? Right? It's, it's a world that's more virtual than ever. Right? People are being allowed to connect and collaborate from any location. And what we're off doing here at Polycom is to unleash that power of human collaboration to make the technology simple enough that you can work anywhere and share any content that you want and continue to get your work done and continue to have some of that work-life balance as well, right? It's time to enable collaboration if you have it already. It's, it's a company-wide business practice. So let me tell you a little bit more about how we are working on Workplace of the Future and our solutions. On October 7th, we had a really big announcement and we announced these four uh, new products to our portfolio. They're new solutions that offer collaboration tools for all kinds of meetings in all kinds of environments. You get everything from traditional audio conferencing, traditional video conferencing, to solutions that also translate into something that can be used in the huddle space, which is also a huge trend because people are, are as Vishal mentioned too, right, the millennials have now taken over more than 50% of the workforce these days and they've grown up with technology, right? It's expected. They're used to teaming, they're used to environments and, um, and answers and solutions quickly. They, have, they want everything at their fingertips as, and, you know, it's part of the trend. So some of our solutions have taken all of that in consideration. And then we offered um, the, the last one you can see on the right hand corner here is called Centro and that's a whole new different way of, of collaborating and it's really unique and I'll, I'll talk more about that in a moment. So first I'd like to talk to you about Real Presence Trio. Real Presence Trio, if, you, if you're familiar with Polycom products, our sound station, it looks very similar to what our sound station products are which is very synonymous with high quality and um, ease of use, dependability, reliability. We've been the leader in the conferencing phone market for a number of years. 
and there it's there for a reason. But what we've done is, even though we've kept that that iconic three point design, is now so much more than just a conference phone. You can now also use it for not only voice, but for video and content sharing and, and pairing with it to bring your own devices, to share your ideas, to be able to see reactions. And we've taken a lot of time and research into making it very simple to use. It'll fit into any team environment, large or small. Trio can be used in so many different ways. So as I mentioned, you can use it in traditional audio conferencing. But should you decide at some point that you want to grow into video, you're not ready for it now, it's no problem. We have an accessory kit that you can add your content and video conferencing sharing, I'm sorry, your content sharing and video conferencing into your organization very simply. So there's no need to rip and replace. You can, you can, we can grow with you as and work the way you want to work. So as I mentioned, traditional audio conferencing, but we've also enabled it with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capabilities and USB so that you can also use your tablet, your mobile phone, your laptop, and use um, solutions like we're using today in um, web-based clients, but still get the benefits of the incredible audio that Trio has to offer. Now, on top of that, if you need to have, you, you're describing what your, what your project is with somebody or what some issue is with somebody, but the words are failing, you really, the image is worth a thousand words, as they say, you can share content very easily. You can use business tools that you're used to using, such as Link or Skype for Business, if you use Real Presence Desktop or Real Presence Mobile, you share content in the exact same way that you would in those clients very easily and it connects with Trio and the other side can see your, your content or if you just want to collaborate internally, you don't even need to make a call, you just want to share something on a larger screen so everyone can see, you're not huddled around a little laptop or a little, um, a little tablet, you can display it on the display in the room and everybody can comment and, and work on it that way. You can also just do a traditional video conference. Uh, Trio has such incredible audio. It's got it's got a number of features in it. And one is it's got this uh, bass reflex port. And what that does is it gives you a rich, full, deep sound when you have lower lows in the room, and it gives you a very natural experience. Um, you can share just audio and content. You can share audio, video, and content. The choice is yours. That's the whole point. <laughs> the choice, we've made it very simple to use. And because it's similar to the conference phone that people are used to, Gen Xers and others, baby boomers, it'll feel familiar. There won't be angst getting into a conference room and getting a conference started because you'll be able to you'll be able to navigate it. We've got a nice color touch screen display on this and icons that are very common and familiar across smartphones, so very intuitive and um, it's a really powerful tool. As you can tell, I'm very excited about this product. It's ideal for huddle spaces because it's also cost effective. Another product that we introduced that is ideal for the huddle space is Real Presence Trio. I'm sorry, Real Presence Debut. I just talked about Trio. <laughs> Debut is this just sleek, system that mounts right on top of a display. It gives you enterprise grade video conferencing. It's simple, it's elegant, it's simple to install, it's simple to use. The difference between this, this huddle space solution and the trio huddle space solution that I mentioned, this one offers um, a pan and tilt camera where the trio is, is more of a fixed camera in huddle rooms where the video is sort of an afterthought it has high quality video, as does this, um, but this is a little bit more compact for for users that um, have huddle spaces, and they may they may not need all the different variables and choices that that Trio has to offer. Although Debut does also allow you to share content, have high quality audio and video, and like I mentioned, simple to simple to deploy and cost effective for the huddle spaces because huddle spaces, uh, I think I've gotten a report that estimates there's about, they're guessing between three, 
30 and 50 million huddle spaces out there that have no technology installed in them because there haven't there hasn't been a, a solution out there that was quality enough for business grade conferencing and collaborating but that was uh, at a price point that made it affordable because there's usually a lot more huddle spaces than there are traditional conference rooms. So another awesome um, huddle space solution that we just announced. Now this is Real Presence Centro. Centro is the first visual collaboration solution that's purpose built to put people at the center of collaboration, enabling teams to meet in the circle and to brainstorm and think about um, whatever it is that they need to think about, where in this case, uh, traditional video conferencing often has the, the displays on one end of the room. And for those in the room, we're all talking and, and collaborating, and, and the people on the wall can often be an afterthought. Um, this brings everybody into the center, so you have eye contact, so that you're more engaged. Centro is um, it's so versatile. You can put it in, as you can see, we've got a number of different designs. It's all your choice. What's comfortable? What's your environment like? What's the experience that you want for your company? Um, we have a solution or a way that you can use Centro and design right around it. This was, um, this was designed with a lot of research. Um, I've got a few notes here only because You'll have to forgive me, this is not my primary area of expertise. TRIO is my primary area of expertise. But, but uh, Centro is, um, so it's powerful enough that it gives you, so uh, uh, these slides are very, very small and I'm not sure you can tell. But in the center of those four screens is where the camera comes up. And so it gives you a view of the of the entire space. So everybody in the room can be seen, can be heard, and can collaborate, share content, small teams, classrooms, large working groups. It's a really unique product and the first of its kind. We also announced Real Presence Media Line Solutions. Media Line Solutions are uh, it's like a one-stop shop. So we're talking a lot today about workplace of the future and trends and where things are going, but the fact remains that not everybody are on the cutting edge and not everybody rides the trend as quickly as others. And so there are still a lot of value to the traditional video conferencing room. Media Line offers a way for you to be able to mount your displays and your cameras and your sound bars and use a nice sleek touch, touch panel, uh, touch display to control the controls on our Real Presence Group Series video solutions. But it's one SKU. You can install it with no tools. It gives you all of the awesome noise block and acoustic fence technologies that we offer to help it for distraction-free meetings because all in all, the workplace of the future boils down to, it's a lot of buzzwords, but it boils down to this. What's going to make your job easier? What's going to make your company more productive? What's going to be most effective on your budget? And how are you going to stay, how are you going to stay competitive? That's really what it boils down to. And we believe we've offered a number of solutions that fit to work the way you want to work, to bring you to where you want to go as fast or as slow as you want to go, but so that your people can be able to collaborate in a workspace, whether that be in a cafe, a home office, or in a, in a big corporate environment. You can collaborate anywhere. You pick the space and we will make it possible. And we also want you to collaborate naturally. We really believe that the technology should not be what drives your behavior, but the reverse. The technology should be intuitive, simple, easy to use, and grow with you. It's all about the experience. We believe the workplace of the future actually has arrived. It's here today. So you can connect your teams with the power of collaboration and continue to be agile, flexible, and, and, and work. Like I said, work without the technology being a hindrance. Uh, that wraps up my presentation. 
if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer anything that you may have. Thank you so much, Carrie and Vishal. Uh, both were very informative. Um, I know there's a lot of new information in there and good stats. Um, things are moving fast in this industry. Uh, let's take a look at the questions that have come in. Okay, we've got a few here. The first one is, if I incorporate some of these technologies in my office, can I still communicate with other offices that don't have them? Um, Vishal, do you want to take that first? Yeah, I mean, the, the idea here is these are not, you're not creating technology silos here. Um, the premise of the next generation worker is to uh, have them be able to work from any place, anytime, anywhere, right? So having them pigeonholed into a particular solution is not what you want. Or having them confined to, um, to only connecting with those within the office space. So the, the, the technologies that you, you pick here, in, including the Polycom technology, allows you to facilitate uh, connections within the office, but also, also outside the office. So Karen, I don't know if you have thoughts you want to share there as well. Yeah, I think that you make a good point, but um, you know, Polycom has always believed in sort of an open type of technology, right? So a lot of our solutions are designed to be able to connect and interoperate with most any other, which is what the whole premise of the unified communications is all about. Um, we don't do things that are so proprietary that they'll only work with only a few or select other things. Um, so yes, you should be. We can use any of the technologies that I talked about today, um, as long as the other things are open standards based. We can connect with no problem. Okay, great. Uh, next question. This looks to be for Carrie. Uh, can changes be made in real time to content being shared through the trio? Oh yeah, sure. So if you're if you're deciding you want to share a PowerPoint presentation or. Uh, a graphic of some sort and you want to edit it, anything that you do on your laptop or your tablet will translate to the other side. So it's, you can share content and it can be dynamic. Great, thank you. Um, the next one, our company currently uses a managed service, service for call launching uh, and troubleshooting. How does managed services play into next generation workplace? Sure. Um, I mean, the, the kind of premise of Next Generation Workplace has multiple collaboration technology components, right? So it's meant to be self-serve in a lot of situations, but there are also situations where it's a high-touch scenario. Um, and in those scenarios, there's you know, that's where you need a managed service provider. So that's really in the end-user-facing area, but if you look at the back-end infrastructure, all the collaboration technology that supports the end-user technology. So the Polycom bridges, for example, right? Uh, the, the integration with the link environment, there needs to be a managed service provider that manages and make, make sure that you know, the software is up to date on, on these core, device, core infrastructure devices, that they're, they're, high, they're providing high availability and reliability and redundancy. So all that back-end data center infrastructure requirements, that's where a managed services provider comes in. So there's definitely a place for uh, that managed service provider within the next generation workplace. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one, uh, my company doesn't use video. If we get Trio as a conference phone, can it be upgraded to video later? Um, Carrie, can you take that? Yeah, that's a good question. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, you can absolutely buy Trio as a conference phone. It is by far the best conference phone on the market as far as audio fidelity and um, the advanced technology we have in that for blocking noise and for um, giving you a full, rich sound. But if, like I mentioned, I think in the webinar, if you want to uh, grow and add video, Later, you can simply just add an accessory kit to that, and that will um, enable content sharing and video for you. No rip and replace. It's good. Super. Uh, the next one's also for you. Uh, does Centro require any room remediation to deploy? Oh, yeah. No, and, and that's what's so fantastic about that. It's a little bit different than the immersive telepresence solutions where you, you may need to have some um, remediation to, to really get it all to fit, but in this case, 
you know, the, the four screens, um, you know, the whole compact solution, you get to build around it in any which way you want. So you can put in couches or chairs or other tables, or but there's no need to um, tearing down walls and things like that. Okay, and the last one that we have uh, for Vishal. Uh, how does York tell, or, sorry, uh, does York tell manage the technology selection process or do we go right to the vendor for uh, these NGW technologies? Um, I think there's a, there's a place for both the vendor and an uh, agnostic provider like Yorktel. Um, if you recall from what I presented there, right, there are quite a few items you have to consider before you select technology or identify which technology makes the most sense. Um, so, for example, identifying workplace personas. What are the work styles? What are the different type of um, uh, uh, real estate considerations that you must take into account? Um, what investments have you already made in collaboration technology? So I think once you start compiling those factors, it helps drives with the, which one of those technology components or items you want to invest in makes the most sense. So Polycom has a plethora of products but without the right solution provider to bring those elements together, you're kind of wasting money, right? You have to know how to bring those together, so. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, I see those are the questions that we had for today. Um, if anyone has any additional questions uh, that they want to shoot over, um, I realize that we didn't post any email addresses, but you can feel free to send it to no more at Yorktel, and I'm sorry, K-N-O-W-M-O-R-E, uh, no more at Yorktel, and I will make sure that it gets to the appropriate resource to uh, follow, your, follow up with your question right away. Um, and as a reminder, we will send out a recording to this uh, webinar uh, within a few days, up to a week, but usually in a few days. Thank you all for joining. I hope it's been useful and, and insightful, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.